No, you're Zachary White. All right. Uh, for the record, this uh, hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Uh, President is Monroe County Federal Court Attorney Rebecca Hicks, Court Appointed Attorney Timothy Leiter, and uh, it appears that the plaintiff Megan Busenbark is present. And Mr. Zachary White is present uh, personally as directed by this court for contempt proceedings. Mr. Leiter, have you had an opportunity to confer and discuss this proceeding with Mr. White? Yes, Your Honor. I had an opportunity to talk to uh, our Ms. Hicks as well as Mr. White. Uh, we do have a resolution. I will let Ms. Hicks place that on the record. All right, Ms. Hicks? Um, yes, Your Honor. Mr. White did come in person this morning. He made the $1,000 payment with a friend of the court. So at the end, I will note for the court that he did file a motion on January 30th that is waiting to be scheduled with the referee. So he has taken the appropriate steps. Friend of the court is asking that um, as long as he's admitting to the finding of contempt, we will be requesting no um, immediate jail time. We will just adjourn this out so we can monitor it for additional payments and for the results of that motion once it is scheduled. Wonderful. Um, Courts, uh, please, Mr. White, that I just want you to be proactive. It sounds like you're, you're doing that. You made the $1,000 payment as the court suggested to you, and you've also filed a motion to reduce your support obligations. Um, Mr. White, uh, are you satisfied you received the right to legal counsel? Yeah. You might confer with Mr. Leiter. Yes. Okay, and uh, you heard the, the recommendation. The court would be inclined to follow the recommendation. If you, if you admitted to contempt this morning, the court would... Um, or your 45 days job, but suspended. In other words, give you the key to the jail. So you, you would not spend time in jail unless you failed to pay in order, um, uh, you failed to keep contact with the friend of the court. For example, if you're injured at work and you can't work, come in and talk with the friend of the court. Just be proactive. Don't sit in your hands. Yeah. Um, yes. So uh, is that what you wish to do this morning? Yes. All right. Uh, raise your right hand to be sworn, please. Do you solemnly swear from the, the, the testimony about giving this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Uh, please state your name and current address for the record. Zachary White. Thank you. And if you move, you need to keep front of the court informed by change of address so we can mail you notices. Mr. White, uh, do you admit and acknowledge that you are obligated to pay child support? Yes. Uh, for the benefit of children born to you and Megan Musenbark? Do you admit and acknowledge you have outstanding arrearages of uh, almost $12,000? Yes. Do you admit and acknowledge you have not made any payments since the December 2023, and that was a uh, drop in the bucket payment of $22? Um, are you currently employed? No. Okay. I'm working on it. Okay. Did you pick up that list at the front of the court? Yes. Well, the front of the court has a four page list of employers that are screwing for employees. I get your job today. I maybe not in Dundee, maybe you got to come grow, but these are. Um, did, did you get a copy of the list? Yeah, I do. All right. Are you I picked up this morning? It. Yes. I don't know. I picked it up on Tuesday. Okay, good. Um, are you disabled? No. So why have you not been paying child support? Uh, just the lack of money. I have a have a job. I got diagnosed with diabetes just recently and just a couple of things. Stuff. You know, the fact you've been diagnosed with diabetes should not prevent you from straight employment. Right. I know not. My health care was not in order. I didn't have health insurance and stuff like that. Well, they may be finding a job that has health benefits as a benefit, particularly if you have a medical condition. Um, Mr. White, we just want to be proactive. You need to start. Uh, yeah, right now your uh, monthly obligation is thirteen hundred eighty dollars. That's a big obligation. Um, and if in fact you you can't afford that, be proactive. File motion, and uh, um, I'm pleased you've done that. Uh, Ms. Six, do you have any questions of uh, Mr. White? I have no additional questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Leiter. Do you have any questions, Mr. White? I do not, Your Honor. Very well, we court uh, uh, finds in this case a support order exists. Mr. White acknowledges his order, his obligation to pay child support. Um, it's clear from the records that Mr. White has failed to comply with that obligation. He has arrearages of almost uh, $12,000. Um, no reason why he cannot secure employment. The lack of due diligence on the part of Mr. White in addressing this obligation is the basis for contempt. The court will currently find Mr. White to be in contempt of court. And uh, of course, kind of follow the recommendation. And Mr. Leiter, anything you want to say before the court imposes a sentence? Nothing further other than to thank Ms. Six as well as the court. All right. Ms. Six, do you want to add anything? Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. 
Uh, Ms. Buzabark, uh, do you uh, uh, have any questions for the court? No, Your Honor. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Ms. Six, what do you suggest for a review date for Mr. White? Your Honor, the court, the friend of the court is looking at March 26th at 8 a.m. And if Mr. White's employed, he can appear via Zoom, is that correct? Um, yes, Your Honor, this is with me. So this would just be on Zoom, whether he's employed or not. Um, okay. But I anticipate that by then they will have held their um, the hearing regarding his motion um, and whether or not it will have been reduced to an order or still be in the objection period. We'll, we will at least have a better idea of where we stand at that time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. White, anything you want to say before the court imposes the sentence? No, sir. Okay, the uh, court doesn't find Mr. White in contempt of court. Mr. White, you are to serve 45 days in the Monroe Jail, but that jail time is suspended and reserved. Your, uh, the $1,000 bond you posted is uh, forfeited to apply toward your urges, 100% apply toward your urges. So it's going to bring him down to $10,900. Uh, you are to appear before Ms. Six for review on March 26, 2024, ADM via Zoom. Okay. Copy of this order would mail to you. Uh, at the address you provided. Uh, make sure you follow through and appear at the, the mo your motion to reduce where will be uh, uh, scheduled for him before a, re a referee. But any reduction will go retro to the date you filed it. Um, so you get some relief. Again, I know Ms. Boosbark's position on that. Um, but um, do, uh, you got to be focused uh, eight hours a day, you're looking for employment. Um, and there are some well paying jobs. You might need to uh, you know, reach out to someone to, to transport you to Monroe if there's nothing in Dundee. But, uh, but Dundee seems to be a um, busy place. It may not be your dream job, but you got to get something. Even it's washing dishes at uh, one of the restaurants out there, you got to get something. And it's healthy for you to keep busy. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other questions, sir? No. Okay. I appreciate your cooperation. I'm glad you made thousand dollar payment. But again, you will not serve time in jail unless you put yourself there, Mr. White. So just be proactive, okay? okay. If there's an issue, uh, talk to your caseworker. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. You're set to go. Thank you, thank you Mr. Leiter. Ms. Six. Your Honor, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Boosbark, you record. can resume out. Mr. <laughs> Paris Ibera is appearing in person this morning as directed by this court for show cost proceedings. Uh, the, these proceedings are being conducted via Zoom. Also present is Monroe County Attorney, Attorney Rebecca Hicks and Court Appointed Attorney Timothy Leiter. Mr. Leiter, have you had a chance to do, confer with Mr. Ibera? Yes, Your Honor, I did. I spoke with Mr. Ibera today by telephone, advised him of the uh, the potential resolution of this. He said he will be uh, he will be admitting to contempt as per the recommendation of Ms. Six. All right, Ms. Six, uh, what's your recommendation? Uh, Your Honor, uh, because he did make that $500 payment and show up in person today, the friend of the court is asking that as long as he is admitting to contempt, he receives no immediate jail, that we adjourn him back to my show cause docket so we can monitor that consistent payments continue coming in. What, what do you suggest for a review dates on your docket? I'm looking at March. <clears throat> nope. I'm looking at your calendar and mine combined, Your Honor. I apologize. Um, April 2nd at 1 p.m. Uh, you are Paris Anthony Ybarra, correct, sir? Yes, I am. Uh, Mr. Ybarra, have you received your, are you satisfied you received your right to legal counsel by conferring with Mr. Later? Yes, I am. Is it correct that you wish to admit to contempt this morning uh, pursuant to this favorable recommendation by Ms. Hicks? Yes, it is, Your Honor. Okay, and if so, the court would impose 45 days, but suspend that and give you the key to that jail. In other words, you would not spend time in jail unless you put yourself in there by not appearing, not paying support, not getting a job. Um, and if, in fact, he, you're having trouble with the employment, file a motion to reduce your support. Now you got to be proactive. Right now, it's clicked along at 223 a month. Thank you. Mr. Yabara, do you admit and acknowledge you're obligated to pay child support for the support maintenance of children born to you and Brittany Powell? Yes, I do. Do you admit and acknowledge you have outstanding rearages of about $3,500? Yes, I do. Uh, do you admit acknowledge you've not made any payments since October of 2023? Now it's a nominal payment of $25. Correct. Have you had any, any income in the last uh, three months? No, I haven't. How do you support yourself? Uh, actually, it's been really hard. Who supports you? 
time to time, um, my uncle will let me do a couple things around his house. Just so I Someone's putting a roof over your head. Someone's feeding you. Yeah, I'm actually, I live with my mom right okay, now. Okay, so your mom's supporting you. Are you disabled? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, Ms. Hicks, do you have any questions, Mr. Ybarra? I have no additional questions. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Leiter, do you have any questions, Mr. Ybarra? No, Your Honor. <clears throat> Very well, based on the testimony that's been presented this morning, as well as the, the records in this matter, the court finds a support order exists. Um, Mr. Ybarra is aware of his court order obligation for child support. He's not paid support. Uh, in a rare that exists, $3,500. The fact that Mr. Ybarra is not disabled, he's young, able-bodied, capable of employment, but simply um, uh, is not making a significant effort as a basis uh, to show this court he's failed to exercise due diligence in addressing this obligation. Probably the court finds Mr. Ibarra to be in contempt of court for fair pay child support. Mr. Ibarra, did you get to the child front of the court this morning? There's a, they have a four page list of employment opportunities in Southeastern Michigan. Yes. Did you get a copy of that list? No, I didn't. Okay. Ms. Hicks, did that list also has, a, does it have jobs available in, uh, well, yeah, the court's got a copy of the jobs available in uh, Brown Sound, Romulus. I have an interview. Okay. Um, pick up a copy of his job lists. These are good paying jobs. There's no reason why you should not be working. There's employers out there that are screaming for employees. It may not be your dream job, sir, but you need to get a job. We even was washing dishes. I mean, Adrian's not a, it's not a, like maybe Michigan. There's businesses in Adrian. It's college town. There's, there's, a, there's I'm sure there's employment opportunities. You've got to make a significant effort in that regard. Even if it's not your dream job, do something until you can get your dream job. All right, anything you want to say, sir, before the court imposes a sentence? No, I don't. Okay. Um, and when you come back for this review in April, you, you need to have a job, uh, sir, because uh, if, if you fail to do that, it shows the court you're just uh, uh, not making the effort and you need to start paying support. If you can't pay the 223 months to get it, you file a motion to reduce your support. Okay, be proactive. Ms. Six, is there anything you want to add uh, or say before the court imposes a sentence? No, nothing further. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Leiter? No, Your Honor, we thank the court, Ms. Hicks. Okay. All right, Mr. Ibarra, I'm pleased you appeared this morning and you came up with $500. Uh, you can thank your mother or whoever uncle helped you out. That will, the court's going to forfeit that toward your rearages, 100% toward your rearages. Not going to fines or costs or corporate attorney fees, going 100% to your rearages, okay? Uh, so it'll bring down about $3,000. And this is, it's um, it's doable. You want to keep uh, tabs on this rearage so it doesn't uh, get any larger. Uh, the court already served 45 days in jail, but reserve and suspend that jail sentence. Keep in mind, you got 45 days in every jail. So if you're, uh, if there's another, uh, if you're brought before the court, there's a good chance you're going to be putting yourself in jail. You can control that. So please do that. Be proactive. Uh, if you get injured and you can't go by, contact in front of the court. And then uh, we, and the file motion reduce your support. At least if the court knows that you're making reasonable efforts, then they're not going to bring you before this court. Okay. Uh, so the $500 bond you posted is forfeited. Your order for 45 days in jail, which is reserved. And your order to appear before Mr. via Zoom on April 2nd, 24 at 1 p.m. Uh, we're going to share and email you a notice. Uh, April 2nd, uh, 1 p.m. And if you move, keep the front of the court, of the court form to make a change of address. Do you have Mr. Yabar's current address, Ms. Six? Yes, Your Honor. We updated it after his hearing earlier this week. Does he need to come down for out of form? Um, no. Not anymore. Okay. Well, okay. Thank you. All right, Mr. Barr, do you have any questions? No, I don't. Your Honor. Okay, you're good to go. Thank you. I appreciate you being here and uh, coming up with $500. Uh, the court doesn't uh, prefer not to put people in jail. So you're all set. Thank you. You're welcome. Conference, I'm going to the parties have engaged in mediation okay. as well, which was scheduled to commence at 1 30. It's now 1 50. Um, this hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Uh, it appears that the parties are present. Mr. Salda, Fisher, the plaintiff. As well as Brian Kutcher, uh, the defendant, uh, appearing with his attorney, uh, Mr. Speck. Uh, good morning. Or good afternoon, Your Honor. Good to see you. For the record, Aaron Speck, on behalf of Mr. Kutcher, who's president in my office with us. Yes, thank you. Mr. Speck, uh, uh, it's a pretty short mediation, 20 minutes. What's going on? Uh, well, Your Honor, when the plaintiff doesn't give us a financial disclosure statement as ordered when the case began, she doesn't give us a mediation statement as ordered in the middle of the case. I've left messages with her that go on returned and she's refusing to give parenting time to my client 
Uh, I think the case can be moved around, moved rather quickly if the court could order some parenting time today. We do have the support, we can calculate, we have both parties' uh, uh, incomes, and Ms. LaPrade has those. But uh, frankly, the plaintiff is basically unwilling and uncooperative in this proceeding to move the case forward, uh, and she believes that my client should not see his children. Uh, he that has is not true. Hold on, Ms. Critcher, do not interrupt. Ms. Critcher, do not interrupt, please. I'll give you a chance to respond to Mr. Speck. Please do not interrupt. Understood? I do. All right, Mr. Speck. Yeah, Ms. Critcher is, yeah, she'll say she's willing, but she wants to have him at her house, micromanaged by her, and refuses to allow my client. He's last seen the children at Christmas, despite asking to see them for their birthdays, which were both in January. What this case is about is Ms. Critcher is just angry with my client. They've been separated for a year, but they raised these two children together. Uh, and my client took them to school, picked them up from school. There was uh, some family trouble with other members of the household and violence, threatened violence with boyfriends. My client has had a hands-off approach, but wants to see Thomas, age seven, and Olivia, age five. What we had proposed in mediation, they work opposite shifts, Your Honor, which is a wonderful thing. She works days. My client works midnights. What we proposed, and I'm asking on a temporary basis, that my client and my clients overnights at midnights, he has nights that swing. So he gets the nights off are rotating always. We would ask the court to give one overnight per week on his days off. He will notify her uh, a week in advance of what those days are. We also would like two afternoons a week on either Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday, because he can get off, he can take them from, take them from school and take them home after school. Uh, this is not unusual. He did this before they separated in January of 2023. He was active with both of his children. Um, we'd also ask the court, because of their differing work schedules, there is no daycare provider that is on a payroll where they're being paid. It's all family. There is no reason, because prior to the separation, of course, my client would pick the kids up after school. Miss Critcher would be working. We would like the first right of refusal to provide daycare anytime after school that uh, that they're in school or even in the summertime, if she's working and he's, he's able to get enough sleep, he should be able to have that opportunity to be with his kids. He's been a, a responsible dad in terms of having time with them and being left alone. But, but Ms. Uh, Critcher is like, well, I believe he has, my client has mental health issues. And we addressed that with the mediator today. It was 15 years ago. He was diagnosed with ADD, was prescribed some anxiety medication when he was 20 years old and was discharged. He's been, he's been over well over 10 years ago since he's been on any medication. And yet, Ms. Pritchard wants to bring this up and try to derail progress when, when, and try to micromanage him to make him be in her house. He's grateful that he got to see the kids, but it's time that he have, he has a three-bedroom a three bedroom house. He's just signed a, a new lease for the premises. It originally had more occupants. Those occupants are not on the new lease that was just signed. So he is ready to proceed and just be a dad. He's asking for one overnight on his nights off, two evenings a week after school, uninhibited, and then the right of first refusal. And it can go both ways. Either party should be able to exercise the right of first refusal since we don't have a paid daycare provider to, to have these kids. And this needs to be implemented immediately. I'm hopeful that if the court is in agreement with what I'm uh, proposing here, there is no property and let this take effect for a month or two that maybe Ms. Critcher will be more thoughtful about maybe this isn't the best interest in this case to be settled so we don't have to come down and try the case in front of your honor and, and spend what I would believe is unnecessary court time because this matter should be resolved. Um, uh, so those are my comments and we can calculate the support based upon those. I would also ask for uh, two weeks in the summer, of course, for parenting time and then the standard uh, alternate holidays and, and school right. breaks yeah. from school. I think we take one step, one step at a time, Mr. Respect. I mean, obviously we can address those in final judgment of divorce. We'll take one step at a time. Let's uh, get, let's resolve some outstanding uh, divorce issues and do some interim parenting time. The, uh, the property, the only thing that the property exists is a timeshare as well as pension benefits. Is that correct? Well, I don't know about the plaintiff's pension benefits, but we have none. We can say that under oath or uh, we, you, you have no pension benefits. But I don't know if Ms. Critcher has a 401k, IRA, or any other. Right. Um, right. I, and have you submitted to Ms. Critcher, uh, Mr. Critcher's uh, verified financial information form? I did that two months ago or more, but Ms. Critcher never supplied hers. Okay. So, Ms. Critcher, have you, if, unless you're not, let me ask you first of all, are you going to hire an attorney? No, sir. Okay, you've got to complete, it's required, you must complete a uh, verified financial information form. You can get them online. Obviously, you received a copy from Mr. Pritcher, correct? So that same form you need yes, to fill out. You need to disclose under oath, and you got to notarize it, what assets you have, and particularly with respect to pensions. 
Okay. Uh, so I don't know why you cannot communicate the, this morning, again, the, in terms of the larger issues. I mean, parenting time can always be modified. If things are not working out, we can always modify parenting time. But we got we to reach some agreement on property settlement. There's also an issue, issue of a timeshare. Um, let me ask you, Richard, do you have any uh, IRA or 401k or pension? No, sir. Okay. So uh, we'll assume that to be the case, but you need to verify that. Or I guess we can uh, provide that in, uh, under sworn testimony. Uh, what about the timeshare? I mean, uh, that's the only thing at issue. You want to get divorced, practice Scripture? Yes, sir. Brian can, can have the timeshare. I can't afford it anyway. All right. He is so you'll, uh, you'll give that to any interest you have in that to Mr. Critcher. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Mr. Critcher, what about that? Uh, are you willing to take it on or would you want the timeshare to go away and be sold? Uh, All right. He'll, he'll take the timeshare. So that could be resolved. Fantastic. Well, the court could say some testimony. So it sounds like the real issue is costing credit time, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and, then, and if you can't reach agreement, then the court will set a quick hearing. The court would like to get, would like to have Mr. Frederick a recommendation today to get a temporary order uh, and for a period of time. Uh, why should the children not see their father, Ms. Richard? It's not that I believe that he they should not see him, sir. I received documentation from Brian's mother after we separated that I was trying to understand his behavior. The documentation states that Brian has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and schizoaffective disorder. It is not that I'm angry. It's not that I don't want him to have time with the children. I am in fear of him being alone with the children because he has such large mood swings. And he has said himself that at times he cannot control his temper or his behavior. He has told me repeatedly, I can't control it. Okay, has he ever taken his uh, temp temper out of the children? Not physically, no. Okay. Mr. Speck, Mr. Kretcher, is he uh, currently being treated? Is he, is he taking medication and being no, uh, treated no, for right. his uh, disorder? No, he was diagnosed 10, 15 years ago with ADD and treated with anxiety medications. Ms. Kretcher says she's in contact with my client's mother. He hasn't seen his mother in four years. So I don't know what medical information she's, she's referring to, but this is probably information that's years old when he was 20 years old, but he was only diagnosed with ADD and he took anxiety medication and you were discharged well over 10 years ago. He's never seen a psychologist or psychiatrist since. So Sir, never I am more than welcome to send the document. With being bipolar, is that correct? He knows, do you know anything about a bipolar di uh, diagnosis? Yeah, I think. Uh, nice I, 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 haven't, I haven't seen the, the paperwork for this. I, I don't know whatever. It was over, over 10 years ago, Josh. Yeah, I was 22, 23. And, and basically, we've had a situation where they've been married for 10 years. None of this has ever come up. He's took, taking his children as a regular parent all this time, and all of a sudden, he, he can't function? That doesn't make any sense. But it has come up. I begged Brian for the last three years of our marriage to see someone or possibly go and get on something. I didn't know exactly what was wrong, but I knew that there was something wrong. I didn't know exactly what the issue was until his mother sent me the documentation, which I can send you if you like. I just, my biggest worry is for the safety of the children. Like I said, I'm not trying to be mean or vindictive. I'm not upset. I just worry about my kids. Okay. Ms. Kircher, what did you have a letter from a doctor? Yes, I have documentation from the facility where he was at when he was committed. Okay, and, uh, and can you provide that to the to the, the front of the court and to Mr. Speck? Yes, sir, I can. And how old is it? Um, it is quite a bit old. Maybe it may be about fifteen years old. Oh, well, that's uh, that's that's a long time ago. It is, sir. Uh, but Again, uh, it is my understanding that those conditions don't just go away. Okay. Uh, Mr. Speck, is Mr. Critcher under the care of any physician right now? No. no you're right. Okay. The court agrees it's a long time, but again, it's easier if someone's been diagnosed with bipolar. It's not something that just, uh, just goes away. Uh, who does Mr. Critcher live with? Lives with him. He has two other roommates, but there's a new lease and that they are leaving because the lease is just in his name now. It has a three bedroom house. Okay. So he's lived with just other roommates, but no one, uh, not a fiance, girlfriend? No, no. Okay. Um, is there even room for these children? It's three bed in the home? And yeah. there's three, three adults in the home? No, no. The lease was just re signed in his name. The other two occupants are leaving. Oh, so Mr. Kutcher will be resigning by himself? Correct. Okay. Um, Mr. Pratt, do you have any thoughts or recommendations that the uh, court believes it would be helpful for Mr. Critcher to at least get an evaluation? That at least put the Ms. Critcher's mind at ease. 
I don't know if we need to do any supervise in the interim, but dad should then opt to, the children have a right to see their dad. Your Honor, I, I don't feel that Mr. Speck's recommendation is that far out of the ballpark, but I, I do agree that to put Ms. Critcher at ease that Mr. Critcher should see someone and, and have someone document if there is a mental health concern, but I don't know why. And I asked Ms. Critcher numerous times why he can't see the children. And again, we weren't really getting anywhere. So I, I, I get that she, she has concerns, but that's nothing new in divorce matters. So I'm not sure why a dad who's been a dad can't be a dad. Okay. Um, well, the court would like to enter an order for some uh, some interim uh, parenting time and enter the order today, Ms. Critcher. Um, if you're willing to talk with Mr. Speck and Mr. Pratt, I'll give you the opportunity. If you're unwilling to even talk about it, then the court will simply order it. Uh, and then the court will also order Mr. Speck and Mr. Um, Critcher secure an evaluation uh, from uh, a, a, an appropriate medical doctor in terms of a prior diagnosis of bipolar. Ms. Critcher, you should provide Mr. Speck and the front of the court and this court copies of those letters. If you have that, something that verifies not just his mother, but there was a physician that diagnosed that, then you should provide a copy of that. Court agree that just doesn't go away. Yes, sir. Um, again, uh, what, what Mr. Speck is suggesting is not unreasonable. The children are obviously, if there's an issue, the children are old enough to vocalize to you the inappropriate, uh, inappropriate dad's parenting time. We both live in Monroe County, not that far away. Um, just, just to uh, with respect to property, obviously, there's no issue, but you need to complete that benevolent financial form. So can you do that in the next seven days? I can. And you said I can find that on the court website? Well, where'd you get, to, where'd you get your complaint for divorce? I Googled it, honestly. Okay. Well, if you Google or you come down to the front of the court, they can give you a form. It's called the Verified Financial Information Form. It's identical to the form that Mr. Speck sent to you, signed okay. by Mr. Critcher. So the court's going to order that you uh, uh, file that with the front of the court and a copy of Mr. Speck within seven days of today's date. Now, I'm going to have you talk yes, with Mr. Pratt briefly about some interim parenting time, and we'll go from there. Like, court like to enter an order today. Um, and this is on a temporary basis. And uh, again, it sounds like there's no issue of property, Mr. Speck. Uh, Ms. Critcher is willing to apparently approve a judgment that uh, there's a, um, a seven year marriage. Obviously, spousal support is not an issue. Presumably, uh, you're not asking for spousal support. Is that correct, Ms. Critcher? No. I'm not. Okay, spousal support is not an issue. That's uh, not a word. It's forever barred. Each will keep their own retirement benefits. It appears they have none. The timeshare, that's awarded to Mr. Critcher. And, Ms., and that's agreed with Ms. Critcher. The personal property has already been divided, correct? Yes. And there are no joint debts? No. So, um, sounds like there's nothing at issue other than custody parenting time. And that's just let's deal with some temporary uh, parenting time and come back maybe in 30 days uh, to uh, to address parenting time. And if in fact we've got some release we can move forward, maybe we can then reduce it to a judgment of divorce. Any other suggestions, Mr. Speck? No, I think that sounds fair. I just think we need to get some parenting time in place so these parties can get used to that. And I would also ask that for the parenting time that he'll just come to the house and he can come to the porch. He's not gonna go in the house. Just yeah, the kids I, can I, either come on the porch or to the, or to the curb, either way. Okay. I would talk with Ms. Pratt and now see if Ms. Critcher is not comfortable with that. They can meet at the uh, sheriff's substation in, uh, uh, in French Sound Township. If they are not comfortable meeting at uh, picking up and dropping off their respective homes for the children. So, Ms. Pratt, do you mind talking with them maybe 15 minutes to see whether they can agree upon any parenting time? If not, then I'll if you can provide the court with your recommendation. Yes, sir. Okay. Can you put in back break our room with I'm sorry, Ms. Critcher, you have another question? Sorry to interrupt. Yes. Uh, my question is so will Brian not be receiving uh his evaluation before he has parenting time with the children? Correct. So you can't you, uh, because of course not convinced that the children are in danger right now. You said you have a letter from 15 years ago, but the, the court before we finalize anything, the court's gonna want to see that evaluation. But I want to do some uh, the court believes that the children should not be deprived of their father, that relationship. So we're going to at least start it, but slowly. Okay. Before we get that letter. And hopefully Mr. Critcher come back at 30 days with a letter from a, from a physician evaluating that, but provide that, that correspondence in the meantime. So Mr. Speck has that, the front of the court has that, and this court has that, those letters that you claim that you received from his mother who are from a, that she received from a physician 
attesting to the fact that Mr. Uh, Critcher was diagnosed with bipolar. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. So I'm gonna put you in breaker room, Mr. Pratt, then we'll have you come back out uh, shortly. The court requested that the two parties confer with Ms. Pratt regarding uh, interim parenting time on a temporary basis. Um, the parties have conferred with the Ms. Pratt, who's right for the fine recommendation. And then on an interim basis, father should have parenting time with the two minor children of the parties on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, picking up the children from school or daycare and returning to mom, mom's home at 8 p.m. <clears throat> What time do the children go to bed, Ms. Critcher? They usually go to bed between 8 and 8.30. Um, she doesn't get off of work till 7.30. That's why we've done it that way, Judge. Is that correct? You uh, you get off work yes. at 7.30? All right. Yes, sir. Okay, so um, the, uh, it appears to be reasonable, and the children shall be returned to mom at 8 o'clock. Additionally, the, children, the father should have one uh, overnight per week. If it is a school day... The dad will pick up from school and return to school the next morning. If it's a weekend, uh, it'll be one o'clock uh, to pick up and uh, if no school and then return at five o'clock if no school. Further, the party shall use app close for all communication. So it's all recorded and communicate in writing. You load the app close on your phone. The issue of child support shall be referred to the front of the court for formal investigation recommendation. You'll both get a mail and a financial form from the front of the court. You need to complete that and send that back. The front of the court will make a written recommendation. They'll mail each of you a copy of the recommendation. And each of you have 21 days in which to file written objections to that recommendation. If you don't object to 21 days, it'll become an order of the court. And that child support would become effective February 1st, 2024. Uh, further, father shall submit an evaluation regarding any psychiatric illness. Uh, with the court suggest, Ms. Critcher, provide the letter, the documentation you have to Mr. Speck and to this court and the front of the court. Uh, further, it's uh, the recommendation that mother, you shall submit a financial disclosure form within seven days to Mr. Speck. Uh, finally, we're going to give you a date to come back because we need to, uh, um, the court will come back. We'll, we'll uh, review parenting time as well as status of, an, of a proposed judgment of divorce. Um, what do you any suggestions respect when it come back in 30 days? Uh, can we do 45 just in case? I don't know how doctors are to get people in to see evaluation. All right. And then uh, the, the, the other thing I think we forgot is she's to provide copies of the medical reports that she has with my client from 15 years ago to the friend of the court in my office immediately. Yes. You can do that, Ms. Critcher? Yes, sir. Okay. You got Mr. Speck's address? Send that to him along with this financial information or verif verification form within seven days. Yeah. And also okay. by the court, the court in front of the court with a copy of that. Um, so that so when, as soon as he gets that, Mr. Kretcher can then make a appointment with a, 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 a physician. So we'll look at a date to come back before I continue the pre-trial conference or end review. Um, sometime early March. That work for you, Ms. Critcher, will be by Zoom, March 14th? Yes, sir. Okay, at 8.30. Ms. Critcher, we'll, we'll mail you your, uh, just make sure your address is still set, Rex. Yes. Okay. Um, Ms. LaPrade, are you still there? Yes, sir. Can you just add that the court will review uh, a continued pretrial conference and review of printing time shall occur on March 14th at 2.30 p.m.? Yes, please? sir. I'm sorry. 8.30. I said 2.30. I stand, court stands corrected. 8.30. That's a Thursday. Um, lastly, uh, Mr. Speck, do you have any objection if the court takes the proofs today to stop the court's clock, knowing that this matter was filed back in October or September? No objection, Your Honor. So it takes a brief testimony. So, Mr. Critcher, what the court's proposing, the court has, has uh, time guidelines that we need to conclude this matter, and there's still some issues that need to be worked through the property. Maybe Mr. Speck can prepare a proposed judgment in the interim. Um, if things seem to be working well, at least addressing the property issues. So the question takes a brief testimony to establish jurisdiction. If there's been a breakdown of the marriage. There's no chance of reconciliation. The court will reserve all issues, including but not to property, custody, parenting time. Okay? Okay. Um, and this uh, parenting time is on a temporary basis. 
Obviously, you want to make sure, Mr. Critcher, do you have uh, beds for the children? Yeah. I'm sorry, is uh, Mr. Speck, your client's muted? Is that what we have okay. a, a beds for the children? Oh, wow. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Okay, and he's, he's got car seats as well? Yes, Your Honor. To transport the children. Okay, all right. Um, and obviously, Mr. Ms. Pritchard, you communicate. If, in fact, the children are upset, I mean, they want to talk to their mom, maybe do FaceTime with uh, Ms. Critcher, uh, Mr. Critcher. So try to be um, cognizant of the, the needs and wishes of the children. You need to uh, carefully de de restore and develop that relationship. Let me start with you, Ms. Critcher. Can you please state your name and print address for the record? Griselda Critcher. Thank you. Ms. Critcher, is it true that you filed the complaint for divorce with this court on about September 15th, 2023? Yes. Is it further true that on the day you filed that complaint, you've been a resident of the Carmen Royal State of Michigan for at least six months? Yes. Is it further true that you married Brian Critcher on December 12, 2016? You separated in January of 2023? Yes. Is it further true there's been a breakdown of your marriage relationship to the extent that the obvious match when you've been destroyed, there's no reasonable chance that the marriage can be preserved? Yes. Is it true that there's only two children born of the marriage who are minors, namely Thomas and Olivia? Yes. Are you currently pregnant? No. All right. Mr. Speck, do you have any questions, Ms. Critcher? I have nothing. I'm satisfied with jurisdiction and venue. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, perhaps you could just verify with Mr. Critcher, your client, that he's heard the testimony of his wife and her testimony is true and accurate to the best of his knowledge, please. Sure. Um, state your name for us again, please. Uh, Brian Critcher. Did you hear the testimony of your wife? Yes. Is that accurate? Yes. And you agree there's been a breakdown of your marriage that there's no chance of reconciliation? Yes. No chance you're going to move back together? And no chance. All right. Thank you. And uh, is Miss Pritcher pregnant at the present time? No, she said she was not. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I missed the judge. Yeah, she testified she was not. Okay. Very well, based on the testimony that's been presented, As well as plain following this matter, the court finds that jurisdiction has been established. The court further finds that there has been a breakdown of the marriage relationship to the extent that the objects of matrimony have been destroyed. And there appears to be no reasonable likelihood that the marriage can be preserved. However, at this point in time, the court will reserve all standing issues and schedule this matter for a continued pre conference, March 14th, 2024, 8 30 a.m. With respect to this recommendation from Ms. LaPrat this afternoon, Ms. Critcher, are you agreeable to trying this? Yes. Okay. So, in other words, uh, the two of you have to communicate the app post in terms of the one overnight per week. Uh, so that one overnight per week should begin next week. Uh, so from uh, the, uh, Mr. Critcher will have plenty time on Tuesday and Wednesday next week. He'll pick them up from school and then he'll return them to you. Um, and both children at school are as one in daycare. Um, Olivia is with the babysitter during the day. I'm sorry, Mr. Critcher, we can't hear you. Olivia is with the babysitter during the day. She isn't in school yet. Okay. Does Mr. Critcher know where the babysitter is at? No, but I can have Olivia brought to the elementary school. Oh, okay. So Mr. Critcher will just go to the elementary school and pick up both of them at the same location. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And Mr. Critcher, do you know what time school is done for the day? Yes, sir. Okay. So make it smooth. Make it good for each other and the, the, your two children. If, in fact, Olivia's not going to be transported over there, Ms. Critcher, you need to inform Mr. Critcher where she, he can pick her up, okay? Okay. So please communicate. There's enough challenges in life. Please communicate. Uh, Ms. Critcher, complete the, the very financial form as soon as possible. Um, if you can't find that online, then come down to the courthouse, and the front of the court can provide you with a copy of that. Complete that and uh, deliver the front of the court at the same time a copy of these letters you have from Mr. Critcher, Critcher's, Critcher's mother, also provide a copy to Mr. Speck when you mail him that completed verified financial form. Okay, Judge Brownlick, how do I give a copy to the court? I have an email for friend of the court and I have an email for Mr. Speck. How do I get the information to you? Okay, uh, the friend of the court can provide that to the uh, this court. So if you want to provide that to uh, the friend of the court, they will uh, can inform the court of those things. Perfect. Thank you. The sooner the better so that Mr. Critcher can then get his valuation. Hopefully he'll have that valuation completed when we come back um, on uh, March 14th at 8.30 a.m. Okay. 
Okay. We can talk about uh, preparing time further at that point in time. And Mr. Speck, maybe you can prepare a proposed judgment, at least get that to move in. You can, um, so I'm, we can I'm, get these parties divorced. All right. Yeah, I'd be glad to do that for the court. Your... All right. Uh, anything further then, Ms. Critcher? No, sir. Well, let's give it a try. If we need to uh, reevaluate things and modify for any time, we can do that. Uh, anything further, Mr. Beck, from uh, your client's perspective? Just so we're clear, that overnight will start on Monday night this next week. You mentioned Tuesday and Wednesday were the evening or the afternoons, but we're going to start the first overnight this Monday. Okay. The recommendation is simply gets one overnight per week. So the parties need to agree upon that. Is that agreeable? That'll be Mondays? We, your Honor, no, just it's. It's effective February 5th because dad already stated he's off on February 5th. So that'll be his first weekday overnight. And then he'll have to communicate via app close to mom what night he's off because he's on a rotating shift. Thank you. All right. So his overnight will be on the uh, Monday, the February 5th. Yes, sir. Uh, and then he'll he'll return the children to school. Not over. What about Olivia? Where do you want Olivia to return to? Daycare? Um. We can't hear you, ma'am. I'm oh, sorry. If he returns Thomas to school in the morning, I can have the babysitter pick Olivia up from school as well. Okay. Perfect. So uh, load the old app close and communicate about those things. So uh, Mr. Kresher will drop both of them off then on, on Monday, uh, I'm sorry, Tuesday morning. Um, I'm sorry. The, uh, uh, so on Monday, the one overnight. Um, oh, so he'll pick him up from school on Monday, have him uh, overnight on Monday, then return him to school on Tuesday, and then after he pick him up from after school on Tuesday till eight p.m. Is that uh, is that the plan, uh, Mrs. Lepad? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mom requested okay. Tuesday and Wednesday for the afternoon visits, and Dad knows that he has one night off every single week that he'd like to exercise that overnight. So they may overlap okay. sometimes. So the final week, the week of uh, February 12th, the two of you need to discuss so when Dad's overnight will be, and they agree upon that. So please work together. you got two children you brought in this world, so work together. And uh, let's get, get those uh, the, those letters to Mr. Speck as soon as possible. Ms. Critcher, you can email them to him, and uh, also to Ms. LaPrade, the front of the court. And Mr. Critchell will can uh, make that point with that physician as soon as possible. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Brad, for your efforts. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speck and Ms. Critcher. That will close. Maybe everyone will be able to copy this. We'll see everyone back here then on uh, March 14th, 830. Via Zoom. Thank, thank you. you, Your Honor. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank oh, you. Okay. Okay. I think I got it. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, my goodness. I was freaking out. I was trying my best. <laughs> I was okay. I'm here. Okay, we'll call the case. Court is now in session. Amanda Joseph versus Kimball Joseph. For the record, this matter is before the court for a pretrial conference, the same as being conducted via Zoom. Uh, sir, you are Kimball Joseph Jr., is that correct? Yes, I am. Okay, it appears that Amanda Joseph has not appeared. She is the plaintiff. Have you reconciled? Uh, yeah, we're just trying to get it all done. Uh, we, we don't have any property to split. I have full custody of the kid, and like, well, I'm just trying to get it done. It's been I've been so busy, and I finally car carved out some time to get it done. So we're just trying to get it done and over with. Do you have an order of custody? Yes, yes, I have full custody. Oh, okay. And uh, this uh, does not indicate there's a prior custody order entered. But Miss Joseph has failed to appear today, so the court has no alternative but to dismiss this divorce complaint. So if you want to be divorced, uh, you you should file. Okay, okay, okay. I can do that again. So that I, uh, yeah, I'll just go down there after the meeting. You've been uh, been separated for eight years, correct? Yes, yes, a long time. Yeah. Um, well, we sent to Mr. Joseph a form judgment divorce. Yeah. Um. Because uh, honestly, she the one. She's the one that let me know about this meeting, and then I was downtown yesterday, and they gave me the info for it. It's like, it's, uh, like, like I said, we're both just trying to get it uh, get it d done and over with. So it's surprising to me that she's not here. Well, uh, we mailed the notice to you at 12 the address that she had on your on the complaints, the summons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never received it at all. Do you live at 126? Yeah, yes, I do. Okay. It was not returned as being undeliverable, so I'm not sure if someone's taking your mail. Um, yeah, yeah. But, or uh, I, I might have dropped the right. Yeah, but I, I ended up getting the info. She let me know about it. That's why it's surprising to me that she's not here. 
she's not here, so because she failed to appear, the court will uh, issue an order um, dismissing this divorce matter. So if you want to get divorced, then I guess you need to file one yourself. Okay, perfect. All right, we'll send you a copy of the dismissal at that address, and, and we have uh, Mr. Rose's address is seven twenty five. Still lives. Uh, honestly, I'm not sure, Your Honor. All right. Okay. All right. The matter is dismissed. Thank you for appearing, Mr. Joseph. All right. Thank you so much. Welcome.